Yo, what's good with you on today's video? I got the how to make a skill trainer video. I did a little poll on this a little while ago, and you guys were like, yeah, you, you wanted stuff like that. So I got it for you guys. You know how in games you go up to an NPC and you can learn skills from them, like um, you want to learn Dragon Fist for 20, 20 cash, 20 coins, whatever the currency, 20 zenny, whatever. Um, then if you don't already own it and if you have a the, and if you have enough money, then you unlock this skill. So I'm gonna show you guys how to pretty much make that. So let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Okay, so first things first, of course, you're going to need a skill trainer NPC. So let's click avatar, rig builder. Let's make a block, block avatar, but it's up to you guys though. Whatever uh, type of NPC you want. But let me, let me go ahead and name it um, skill trainer. Yeah, I guess we'll just go name it skill trainer. We're gonna to want to insert a proximity prompt into it, right? And then you're gonna to want to name, I mean, sorry, not name. You're gonna to want to change the action text to, um, is do you want to learn a new skill? Yeah, we could change it to like that. Maybe change the whole duration to 0 0.5. I mean, that's optional. You guys don't do that, but just, you know. And then I'm going to insert, first, I'm going to insert a number value, then I'm gonna insert a string value, right? So for the number value, this is of course the price. So price, and then you're gonna set the price for each individual skill. So let's say 10, let's say 10, yeah. And then for the string value, hit here will be the name of set skill. So we're gonna say skill, right? This will be the name of set skill. So let's do Dragon Fist, right? From Dragon Ball, let's do Dragon Fist, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And just like that, we have set up the NPC or the skill trainer, right? So then let's go ahead and insert a remote event into replicated storage, plus icon, and remote event, if you don't see it, click it, boom, let's go ahead and name this remote event, skill trainer event, right? Then let's go ahead and let's start working on our skill trainer G, uh, GUI, very simple UI. Let's go ahead and insert a screen GUI into starter GUI. We're gonna go ahead and name this GUI, um, let's do skill, trainer gui then you can disable reset on spawn and then we're going to go ahead and insert a local script into it right and then we're going to we're going to name the local script skill trainer script and in parentheses put local we're going to come back to this though i want to finish the ui first and then come back to the code so yeah let's go ahead and insert a frame into the ui we're going to go ahead and name this frame skill trainer frame right and then you guys can customize it to your your heart's extent like you can do whatever you want with it um i'm just do it like this make it like 300 125 or you can do 150 yeah like 150 or maybe like 400 maybe? or nah nah yeah 300 should be good and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make the background transparency make it like halfway transparent change the color to a nice black uh and then yeah I'm gonna go ahead and insert uh, two text buttons and a text label. Actually, no, let's do one text button, then we'll duplicate it, so we'll save time. So first, let's do the text label. Let's insert a text label, wherever it is. Okay, right there. So into the text label, you're gonna wanna name this text label skill, uh, skill, I guess skill, uh, skill trainer. Skill trainer header, I guess, right? And then you're gonna of course customize it to whatever whatever you want. Uh scale the text, rich, bold. Uh you don't need to have you don't need to have any text. We're gonna set the text um via the script so you don't need to have any default text. Then let me go ahead and change the background. Let me first let me put this in the middle. Then as for the background, uh make like a nice like a nice gray, maybe. Yeah, like a nice gray, and then you can kind of fade in yeah, something like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and insert a text button, right? So insert a text button and then let's put this right here. And then of course, let me make it a little smaller. So I'm gonna go with like 100 or uh, no, no, like 150. And then I'm gonna go ahead and name, I may, have to, I may have to come back to change the sizing. So we're gonna leave it like that. Let's call this accept text button. This, this means we're accepting like we're trying, we're we want to purchase the skill. So accept text button, let's customize it, of course, make the background color green. Let's go down here, rich, uh, scale the text, let's change the text to accept. Um, um, bold the text, I'm gonna set the text, text 
stroke text stroke transparency zero text stroke color make it like white right and then i'm going to duplicate this by selecting it press control plus d right boom put it over here okay yeah we do need a little bit of space so let's uh let's see let's try um like one, 145 should work really yeah 145 should work let me get the second one let me just move it over yeah there we go and then i'm gonna of course name the second one you guys already know it's gonna be decline so we'll change the color to red then decline text button change the text to decline boom All right just like that guys we are done with the ui <clears throat> now we can get back to the scripting and let me just okay we're good and now we can get back to actual scripting so let's delete print hello world right first we're going to need to make two variables one the skill trainer ui and the skill trainer uh remote event so local skill trainer gui is equal to um oh yeah script that parent because remember we put the local script inside of the ui then local skill trainer event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child skill trainer event then I'm going to set up one function. It's gonna it's gonna be the remote event. So skill trainer event that on client event connect function in parentheses. You're gonna to want to put event type comma arg one comma arg two short for arguments. So argument number one, argument number two. Then I'm gonna say if event type is equal to quotation marks skill trainer enter. Then I'm gonna say local skill is equal to argument one. Local price is equal to argument number two right then i'm going to set the text of the skill trainer header so i'm going to say skill trainer gy that skill trainer frame that skill trainer header that text is equal to you guys can make the text whatever you want this is what i'm going to go with i'm going to say do you want to learn the space i'm going to say dot 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 on the outside i'm going to say skill dot value dot 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 quotation marks space Forward and you know the dollar sign dot 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 price dot value dot 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 quotation marks and then um question mark right and then i'm going to make the oh i, I forgot actually one thing, one thing so um also you want to set the frame to not visible and make sure it's not visible we're going to enable it because we're changing the text each time a player is you know opening a prompt because you know you can use this for any npc since you're going to have multiple skill trainer npcs you want to change the text for depending on whatever the abilities are trying to buy so or whatever whatever they're trying to buy so then after that i'm going to say skill trainer gui dot skill trainer frame dot visible is equal to true i mean you could tween it like if you wanted to just do like transparency you could do you could do that but i'm not gonna do all that then i'm gonna set up two functions inside of this function right the accept and the decline function so i'm gonna say skill trainer gui dot skill trainer frame dot accept text button and then i'm gonna say mouse button that mouse button one click connect function in parentheses i mean close parentheses enter then i'm gonna then i'm gonna fire them with event skill trainer event fire server in quotation marks gonna put purchase skill right then I'm gonna say comma skill comma price right then I'm going to disable the frame so you can really just copy and paste this control C control V let's see to false then onto the second function which let's say ourselves a lot of time doing this just can just copy the entire function we just did go V paste it the only difference is you want to just delete that part and boom oh yeah also change this to the client fix button right and just like that guys we have finished all the client side scripting now let's move on to the server side so we can go ahead and close this out insert a server script into server script service let's go ahead and name this script skill trainer script and in parentheses put server we're going to delete print hello world we only need one variable actually so it's going to be the remote event so let's say local skill trainer event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child skill trainer event then i'm going to set up a for loop for the skill trainer uh proximity prompts uh fun the proximity prop function so i'm going to say for i comma v in pairs workspace get children it's essential that you name all your skill trainer npc use the same name so you could do if v that name is equal to quotation marks skill trainer enter right and then v dot proximity proximity prompt dot triggered connect that's what i write connect function then in parentheses you can put plr short for the player enter and then you're simply just going to fire it back to the client so skill trainer event fire client the player 
then comma quotation marks skill trainer comma you're going to say v dot skill comma v dot price right and we've set up that first function now on to the second one this is so that we can i can show you guys how it works for like how you own how you know if a player owns the ability and as well as uh, making sure they have the right one to cash for it so well that's kind of in the third function but this is like so a player has cash generally speaking so i'm going to say game dot players that player added connect function in parentheses put plr short for the player enter you're then going to create an owned bo boolean so we're going to say local owned then the name of your ability so local owned dragon fist is equal to instance dot new full value parented to the player on dragon fist dot name is equal to owned dragon fist right and then i'm going to of course set the value by default equal to false then i'm going to make another one I'm, this is cash so local cash is equal to this time instance dot new uh number value right parented to the player and of course cash dot name is equal to is equal to cash then cash dot value is equal to zero and just like that we have set that function this is that we the player has cash so we can check if they uh have enough to purchase it and we can see if they already own it because if they do already own it you don't want the player making like double purchases you don't want them like getting charged for something they already own right so that's why it's important to have those type of checks there then i'm gonna set the last function skill trainer event dot on server events connect function in parentheses put oh sorry put plr then event type comma r1 comma r2 remember short for argument number one and argument number two then i'm going to say if event type is equal to quotation marks purchase skill enter set up two variables first things first local local skill is equal to argument number one local price is equal to argument number two right then i'm going to set up an if statement i'm going to say if player regular brackets quotation marks owned dot 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 then say skill that value on the outside put that value right and then we're going to say is equal to false this is checking make sure that the player doesn't own it so they're not making a double purchase and player dot cash that value we need to make sure they have enough cash to purchase it so greater than equal to rice dot value enter and i'm going to say player dot cash that value is less than equal to rice dot value and then I'm going to set the owned uh, value as well. So quotation marks, or actually, no, let's just save ourselves some time. Just copy, literally just copy and paste this. Boom. Control C, Control V, right? Then we'll say that value is equal to true. And boom, just like that, guys, we are done. As always, if you want access to any of my scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Links to both those options can be found in the description. And yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and test this. So do you want to learn a new skill? If I press if I or if I hold it, you guys see. Do you want to learn Dragon Fist? The name of the ability. The name. Oh, I probably should change the text to white because yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Not gonna lie. But anyway, do you want to learn for ten dollars? So regardless, of, so if I click accept or decline right now, nothing is gonna happen because I don't have enough money, right? So if I let me show you guys. It's set to, so if even if I click accept, nothing's gonna happen because I don't have enough for it. Now if I pull it back up, go on the server side, change my player's cash amount to ten dollars exactly, and then try to buy it boom there you go took my cash i now own the ability right now if i already give myself uh 20 cash right and then i try to go back and buy it again and click accept nothing is going to happen to my cash i still have 20 cash because we have to check to make sure that the player doesn't already own it before they can purchase it so that they're not so that they're not charged for something they already own right but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next video thank you for watching